This is a Digital Music Trends 150 recorded on the 19th of September 2013. This week audio partners with Cumulus Media, iTunes Radio launches in the US, Rhapsody shakes things up, Pandora wins the direct licensing argument with ASCAP, Clear Channel partners with Warner Music and lots more. This week's show is sponsored by media law firm Sheridan's at sheridan's.co.uk. Welcome to Digital Music Trends, live from the Future Music Forum in Barcelona and uh, we're here with uh, some great guests. Uh, you know, Digital Music Trends is available on a variety of channels uh, as you probably know if you listen to the show. We're on uh, the podcast app, of course, iTunes, most podcatchers, SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and uh, Spreaker as well. And so it's great to be here uh, with uh, Virginie Berger from the uh, agency Don't Believe the Hype. So hi Virginie, how's it going today? Hi, as I said, I'm very, very happy to be with you, really. <laughs> and I'm here with Niall Dorley, who is one of the organizers of the Fish Forum, who's going to join us for the first few minutes just to chat about the event. How's it going now? I'm very sweaty, actually, Andrea, <laughs> but it's going really well, yeah. We're almost there. Another couple of hours and I can actually relax. Exactly, <laughs> another few hours. And Giampiero Di Carlo from rockhall.it and rockhall.com as well. So hi, Giampiero, how's it going? Hi, thank you for having me. It's great to have you on. And so uh, today, uh, you know, I want to start just by chatting a little bit about the event, uh, Niall. Uh, so, how has it been so far? We're like a day and a half in, and it's a great turnout, great party last night, and great panels. So it's, it's all going well, really. Yeah, no, really happy actually. Um, fourth time around, so we're we're, we're growing. Um, the best turnout yet, you know. So it's it's happy. I think that everyone's really happy with the venue, the the, the the quality. I think of the speakers yesterday and, and so far today has been awesome, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, on, on an organizational side, I, I couldn't be happier, you know. Let's, let's hope the next couple of hours go well and. Uh, we can have some drinks tonight and kind of let loose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Virginie, what was your highlight so far in terms of sessions or presentations? Oh, can I say my session? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> no, um, yesterday afternoon it was really interesting, uh, you know, uh, but this morning uh, the panel with uh, Erdio and Orange uh, about international expansion and a streaming platform uh, yeah, because they talk about the problems they could have uh, when they want to um, um, expand their, biz their business, and especially with, uh, with streaming platforms. So um, until now, uh, all was so you're happy yeah, you. exactly. I'm, I'm happy, really. <laughs> And I really enjoyed uh, Scott Coyne's uh, presentation yesterday morning as well. It was really, really awesome. good and really... Yeah, the guy, the guy knows. It's always out of the box, so yeah. which is, it yeah, gives you like great. another perspective on things. And Giampiero, anything in particular that you, that you enjoyed? Well, this is my third time here and uh, I can witness this event is growing. So congrats to Niall and the staff. Uh, the location is just perfect this year and uh, the level of the panels and uh, the keynotes were, was very, very, very good. Uh, yesterday morning the kickoff was excellent. It just, you know, it gives you a lot of uh, positive stamina sure. to, sure. you know, to have somebody like Scott speaking like that. Yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. So it's a futuremusicforum.com and go and check it out. Uh, I know you filmed a few of the sessions, so perhaps they're going to be available. Yeah, no, there will point. be audio. Uh, we're we're going to get some audio up on the website and possibly on Mixcloud. Uh, uh, audio channel on Mixcloud as well. Perfect. Uh, plug awesome. Mixcloud. And uh, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you get on with uh, the million things sure. you still have Thanks to do. That's great. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you so much for coming on. It's great. So yeah, it's uh, the first time we do this live. So Jim Piero, you can move. Uh, yeah. You can move uh, this way, and then uh, perhaps we're going to have somebody else join us uh, in a, in a little while. Okay. Uh, and we start this week by talking about Audio. So Audio announced a pretty huge deal this week. Unfortunately, one of the guys from Audio had to leave uh, the forum uh, just now because he had a plane. Uh, otherwise, he would have talked about it. But uh, the company announced a deal with Cumulus Media, which is a company that uh, 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 operates over 500 radio stations in the United States. Uh, so. Uh, that's pretty cool because it gives audio a huge amount of exposure with uh, mainstream consumers uh, through the radio stations. Uh, it also um uh, the uh, Cumulus is also going to get an equity stake in Audio apparently, and uh, one of the more interesting things actually is that Audio is going to start uh, uh, advertising on uh, and creating a freemium model so that consumers are going to be able to join Audio for free like with Spotify and Cumulus Media is going to take care of the advertising sales part of it, which means that Audio is not going to have to deal with uh, hiring a huge amount of people to deal with uh, doing all that side of things, which is pretty great, really. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's really awesome. And so uh, let's talk about that. And uh, so what do you reckon is Audio's plan at this point? Do you think that they had to go this way and uh, to try and compete with Spotify? Because now they only had a premium option and they didn't have a freemium option. So, so what are your thoughts on that? 
I have my microphone now, it's yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's very, very smart um, for audio, really. Uh, and they also have, you know, the vi video yeah. video service. Yeah, it's, it's also very smart. Um, yeah, it's a new model. It's, it's different from Deezer because it's not also Spotify, it's also Deezer. Yeah. Um, audio is not in France, for example, uh, because of a uh, wonderful right management system. Uh, hi, Sassem. Uh, so... Um, yeah, for them it's different. I mean, yeah. it's 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 a gap um, between between Spotify uh, versus not between, but versus Spotify or versus Deezer. So it's um, extremely smart, yeah. very creative, um, and it's the best solution for streaming because for me, Deezer and Spotify, the, the business model of Deezer and Spotify, it's a very nineties. No business model. It's only yeah. Sorry to say that, but really, it's only music and advertising, and that's it. So um, yeah, it's a it's a new way of monetizing their music and um, uh, a new exposing way ex music, exactly service, exposing well, music yeah, service yeah. And, and reaching new customers yeah. and uh, um, no and, perfect and, uh, absolutely. And Jean-Pierre, as, as a business owner as well, you'll appreciate the importance of reducing costs and uh, oh, yes, being able definitely. to implement. Uh, a huge advertising team. I think Cumulus has hundreds of people you know, working on the advertising sales and not having to build your own. Sounds that's so like expensive. the perfect outsourcing solution mm -hmm. yeah. and also gives us a couple signals there because uh, uh, I kind of agree with uh, Virginie about the, the, the business model, but um, the other signal we get from the industry is, uh, is dual. Uh, the traditional industry is looking at um, digital radio and uh, web radio in a very interesting way. Otherwise, they wouldn't take a stake in the company. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, the, the, the signal we get from Ardu is that it's still very complicated to crack the code of uh, the web radio business model because yeah. here we're trying to uh, offset the licensing costs with advertising and that's proven to be pretty tricky uh, yeah. we, we can mention Pandora of course yeah sure but also other examples of that yeah and, and I guess like uh, one of the barriers of entry of audio was the fact that people had I think they had to give credit card details before they could sign on and I think they had a fairly extended free trial period uh, but uh, there was still that barrier of uh, you know it being a great free trial period because it had no advertising on it but then again at the end of that if you wanted to become a user of the service you had to pay. Now, with the fact that you can use a service for free, that becomes a whole different equation. So, so yeah, it's it, it, it is very happen. different from the offer from uh, from the offers from uh, from Spotify and Deezer because. Well, in a way, though, it's becoming the same now. Like it's it's moving yeah. towards that direction. Yeah, but Deezer, you have to pay. I mean, you can listen to uh, five songs, I guess. Okay, uh, so Deezer doesn't have a freemium option no, like Spotify. No, no, oh, okay. no, no, it's, no, no, no. Deezer is very. It, it, it's different. So that's why it, it's it's. Uh, it's a good idea, okay, and it's cool. good. Yeah, yeah. For this, one, you have to listen to f f for free. You you can listen to five songs, I guess. Only five songs. Yeah, for free. That's and then you have to listen to music, uh, to listen to commercial, yeah. and then listen five songs. And you know, so, yeah, no, it's it's not very, um, you know, sexy. <laughs> yeah. uh, if I can use this word. <laughs> going back to audio, uh, what they did was uh, with this move, cutting a huge promotional cost, which was the the cost of uh, uh, getting some traction from the user by letting them use the, the, radio, for the radio for free. And yeah. uh, now they can afford that because even if they lose some traction, they will get the money from traditional advertising thanks to Cumulus. Yeah, sure. And, yes. and uh, you know, streaming is, is the word of the week really because uh, uh, iTunes radio launched uh, last mm. night in the United States. Uh, so, of course, uh, not, none of us has uh, got a chance to try it yet. Uh, I should have got Benji. Uh, out because yeah, I think he's got the new iOS and being from the states he could access it. But uh, but the, the thing is, and all all of the reviews that I read are are saying that it's a, essentially exactly like Pandora. The only thing that's really improved is the experience on the purchasing side of music, so you can really buy tracks super easily. And so really, like it's not a question of going, oh, look at all these new features. It's more of a question of going, okay, let's see how users react, because you know it's rolling out to tens of millions of people at the same time across the United States. So it's going to be a question of seeing how fast are these users going to adopt uh, well, the, the, the new iTunes radio. Uh, first off, it was a predictable move. We've been talking about this for years. Yeah. And uh, it was predictable because Apple have an ecosystem. So it was just a consequence of uh, what they've been doing so far. 
uh, we don't know how they will react. Uh, sure, sure thing is Apple is, uh, um, you know, it's a hard blow for Pandora. As a matter of fact, Pandora is reacting by issue new. Uh, we'll maybe talk about that later, but sure. issue new shares. So uh, using the money, diluting and using the money to probably acquire some solutions. And um, talking about blurring lines, because really uh, streaming, uh, paper, different models that are still proving us that we're living a very hybrid situation so yeah. far. Yeah, and I envision, of course, in France it's going to be difficult because uh, you know they're going to have to do a deal with SASM and, and everything else. But yeah, you, you think know, we a don't know Pandora for... in France. We don't know yeah. <laughs> since radio in France. So. <laughs> but you reckon like it, it, there is a market there for? The, is there a big uh, iOS adoption in France? And if, if so, do you think people that have a, a, an iPhone or an iPad? Oh uh, yes, are likely yes, to use yes, the yes, well? yes, definitely. Uh, you know, look the look the data is about Daft Punk. Yeah. Uh, for example, when uh, uh, you know. You can listen to the Daft Punk on iTunes uh, for free, uh, you know, only by streaming. And then you can buy Daft Punk. Uh, right. And the, the, the conversion rate was just huge. It was amazing. So, yeah, definitely there is a market yeah. in France. It just we have, you know, the problem with SSM and with the, the, the right management. So it might be really, really difficult for, for I, maybe for Pandora, but not for iTunes because... I'm sure they will find a deal. It's like Google with uh, yeah. with the video on Google, so they will find a deal on France. I'm sure. Yeah, and another last large scale partnership uh, this week. It's a week of partnerships as well, mm -hmm. streaming and partnerships. Is the one between Clear Channel and Warner Music. So that was quite interesting because uh, it's a bit of a convoluted partnership. It's not very straightforward what they're going to do together. But essentially, you know, the two companies have entered an agreement for the first time in the U.S. Uh, a major record label will, co will, will collect performance royalties on music played uh, in any of the broadcast giants 850 plus radio stations. So, you know, the U.S. market has always been very different from the U.K. and, and the rest of Europe, where uh, performance royalties are due for uh, play music on 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 traditional radio in the US that's not the case and so that's uh, this is a historic uh, move for Clear Channel to allow this and so what does Warner get out of this deal so apparently um, Warner will be, uh, will be able to license the music uh, sorry um, Clear Channel will be able to license the music from Warner at a lower rate for the uh, streaming uh, services like iHeartRadio for example um, in return uh, Warner will get uh, a lot of exposure on the Clear Channel uh, radio stations, uh, uh, you know, artists will, will have a special spots and, and all of that. So it seems like a very interesting deal, a, 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 a new type of deal that I think we're going to see more of. Uh, and uh, and uh, I don't know, what do you think about, A, the evolution of radio in the, in the States, and uh, B, the way in which major labels might end up closing up to big broadcasting giants in order to get more exposure as well? That's... Uh, Go first? Yeah? Go first? <laughs> uh, in the U.S., broadcasters uh, usually have paid um, only publishers. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing here that the digital model is impacting the traditional model this time. So the agreement kind of uh, suggests that uh, Warner is making sure that uh, via this partnership, the world knows that terrestrial radio also has to pay for rights which is new for the u.s so this is the first point of the collaboration otherwise like you said it's not too straightforward or at least they didn't disclose details so we don't know what the actual advantages for a, a clear channel will be other yeah. than uh, having better rates for high, uh, high hertz radio yeah which yeah. is a strong competitor for uh, pandora and uh, so forth yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting one yeah. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is it, is it, could it be in any way worrying to see a major cozy up to a broadcaster to get better exposure for their yeah, artists? It's, it's, and what happens when the other majors want to come in into that it's, deal? It's, it was exactly my thought. Because um, Warner is the smallest one of the three at this point, right? Yeah, you know, in France, for example, this kind of deal is is uh, is forbidden. You can't. You just can't. It's strictly forbidden. You you, you can't buy. I mean, you can uh, for advertising, but it's it's clearly advertising. So it, right. it's 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 different. You can't. But uh, it's the first time for um, for for radio. Uh, it's the first time um, uh, they understand that they need to pay rights. So. It, and it's the first time, as you said, so it's good, but uh, I'm a little bit worried 
about this kind of deal because when you said, for example, uh, with spots for for advertising or visibility for the artist or or maybe licensing or uh, on what do they have the right to choose or uh, it's about synchronization and <laughs> what about the rights and yeah. and is it real commercial? I mean, it's it's it, it's clearly advertising or not? I, I was going to add a couple things if yeah, I may. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm being weak here, but kind of reminds me of the uh, ultra famous Paola things back in, in exactly, the day. Exactly, exactly. And also, uh, <laughs> if we want to see it uh, from a different standpoint, maybe be more positive about it, uh, it also suggests some form of uh, branded content. Like I yeah. said, the digital going back to the traditional model and uh, yeah, impacting the... If it's really branded content. Really, but we don't know. Yeah, exactly. They didn't let us know so far. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll see. I, I think it's it's an interesting one, especially like uh, as we're talking about two of the major. We've already talked about two of the major networks, which is Cumulus Media on one side with audio, and then and now a Clear Channel with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Warner now, and also the partner with Spre Spreaker, which is another interesting uh, audio audio production company. And so we're seeing a lot of partnerships. It feels like there's a need for all these deals to come through in order to create a better ecosystem for the entire yeah. industry uh, but at the same time it could be worse so that's that's the main problem it could also be seen like a defensive move you know yeah, it, uh, yeah. people just don't know what's going to be next and so they make sure they uh, they have some stakes yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And now a short information piece recorded with DMT's sponsor for this show, Sheridans. I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir from Sheridans and this week we're going to talk about live. And live is quite a complicated area because uh, often you have a separate contract for each of the gigs that you're doing. So first of all, what are the m main legal pitfalls involved when you're talking about live? Uh, I guess it depends on what stage of your career that you're, you're at. So uh, ultimately when you're first starting off, um, you know, the values of the monies around live are quite small, so there tends to be less formality around agreements around that. But uh, there's quite a lot of pitfalls. The bigger you get, the bigger the production of the of the uh, the, the, the the performance, uh, the more contracts you start start ending uh, entering into. The big pitfalls are not getting paid. How do you deal with that? Uh, not being able to perform through no fault of your own, i.e. weather or you lose your voice. Uh, what are the insurance provisions around that? Um, uh, and similarly cancellations. And then as, it, as the tour gets bigger and overseas, then there's things like visas, withholding tax. It's actually quite complicated. And yeah, sure. uh, I mean, I've worked on some of the biggest touring deals around the world. And in that, you've got you know, hundreds of, of agreements which you know, keep on going. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at uh, international, for example, what happens if you don't get paid in uh, Romania or in Italy? Like, it, there's probably quite a lot of costs involved in trying to get the money back. Sure. Uh, I mean, if you if you've got the leverage, then you do what's called you ask for a guarantee. So that's effectively what you're saying is we want a minimum guaranteed payment for the show, which you should get paid into escrow account, which is a separate third party account before you perform. And that gets released to you after you've performed. And then, you know, uh, deals are then split up between guarantees and net profits. So anything that's above the guarantee level where the sh you've agreed a percentage of the, the revenue that comes above that, you'd want to get a percentage of that. That you, the quicker you get paid, uh, if you can even doll it up the night after the performance and get paid then, the less chances that you're not going to get paid. Sure. And people are talking about live as one of the primary uh, income streams for artists uh, in today and in the future. But the problem is that most uh, emerging artists are uh, probably lucky if they break even and uh, most of them actually lose money on the first door. So how do you deal with that? How do you try and make money? Can you Im improve uh, and optimize your touring uh, uh, set up to make some money out of it. Sure. Uh, it's interesting actually because uh, making money initially is actually all about quite often about reducing cost. Yeah. So think about this, think about your, even your management deal. Think about how do you pay your manager? Do you pay your manager on gross for live or net? It should never be on gross because then if you're making a loss on your tour, you're still paying your manager the commission on that. Um, similarly, if you're a six piece band, that's an, that's an expensive touring entity. So how do you reduce those costs? Do you need to have, you know, six hotel rooms do you you know do, how, how can you cut costs so that's that's important secondly in this day and age with social media the internet it's all about making sure the venues that you play at are filled up as yeah. much as possible and the artist has to take responsibility for that as much as you know the venue itself so you, you know 
use your data of your fan base, uh, get that working for you, use interesting sites, you know, that can help get artists, so get fans to your, your site. Make sure you know who your fans are, make sure you collect the data after the event, so that then you can build on that for the next event. Um, knowing who your fans are for live performances is very important because if you know who your fans are you can constantly tell them where you're going to be and you can monetize that later on through merchandise etc that's great thank you very much until next week and so uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, lawsuits actually <laughs> we're gonna well, you know it's, it's very it's a very US uh, US focused show today because uh, there's been a lot of evolution in, in, in the way that uh, companies are operating uh, on the radio front, uh, traditional radio slash internet radio slash uh, 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 on-demand services. There's there's an interesting yeah. vertical happening here in, in terms of news at least uh, this week. And so um, one of the things that happened this week is that uh, there was a, a, a return uh, of, uh, well, a continuation of this uh, lawsuit uh, uh, between rights holders and Sirius XM uh, in the US. So what is happening is that uh, more and more rights holders, uh, and uh, first I think it started with, uh, um, with uh, the Turtles, the, it's, it's, a, it's a 1960s uh, uh, band, uh, and then it uh, carried on with uh, a number of independents, and now all the majors have come into the picture, uh, as well as APCO. Uh, and they are suing Sirius XM because uh, Sirius is not paying royalties. Uh, or uh, on uh, uh, tracks that were recorded prior to 1972. So, why 1972? Well, uh, prior to 1972, rec uh, sound recordings are not uh, uh, governed by state law, uh, by uh, federal law. They're governed by state, uh, presumably by, by state law. And the, and the fact is that uh, Sirius essentially assumed that because there was no federal law protection on those recordings, they could use them on on, uh, 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 on their radio, uh, the satellite radio channel without paying for any or licensing any of them. Uh, so of course artists and labels that have a lot of catalog prior to 1972 are saying, well, wait a minute, even if they weren't uh, licensed uh, uh, through uh, federal law, they should still, you know, uh, state law should still be applicable. So it's quite complicated legally, I'm sorry uh, for, for this crazy like uh, uh, diversion, but but it could mean like hundreds of millions of dollars that Sirius XM ends up own, own, owing to older artists uh, that yeah. have released a lot of music uh, prior could, to those that years. That could be a business killer too. Yeah. It could be. I mean, I, I guess like Sirius is so but big. We that don't it believe it is. I yeah. mean, it could be theoretically, but we don't believe it is. The point is that uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Sirius is sitting on a 3.4 billion turnover. Exactly. And uh, that turnover includes uh, Sirius uh, giving back some 8% of uh, uh, that gross turnover yeah. to uh, right holders. Yeah. And so we're talking about increasing that sum. In fact, I guess, uh, um, what's their name? Uh, Sound Exchange is in, in the picture too, yeah, because sure. they were the ones who helped the labels uh, to um, argue about the counting of the royalties. So. Yeah. Again, I know I'm going to be repetitive today, but uh, it's uh, another signal of uh, how the digital model is impacting the traditional model. Uh, we had radios not paying for uh, recording music, recorded music, only publisher so far, and we at the same time uh, had the industry making the web radio pay for everything, blanket licensing and everything, because they had to monetize thanks to the digital age. And now, yeah. this model, the digital model, is going back like a boomerang to hit the terrestrial, in this case, the satellite radio. Yeah, and we're exactly. talking about 200 million users. Yeah. Or, it's... It's, it's a huge amount of yeah. users, yeah. yeah it's, 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 a, it's, a big, it's a big lawsuit, and I think even if the labels were to win, I think Sirius would not be in such massive trouble, to be honest, you know. Okay, they might have to pay a few hundred million that they weren't counting on, but it's such a big business that I'm not sure whether it would actually impact it like extremely. It may, it may, it may impact it a little bit, but I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a message you pass to the yeah. whole industry. It's, it's, it's bigger than serious and... Absolutely. No, I, agree. I agree with you. For me, it's more, it's more a message. It's yeah. more, okay, you're a digital radio, a satellite radio. But <laughs> you have to be careful with uh, with the rights. Yeah. So it's it's more yeah it's it's more message. For me. It's a message that, in my opinion, applies to uh, internet radio as well yeah, because exactly. it's yeah. same same subject. Exactly. Yeah. 
Sure. And uh, uh, another case, that, uh, <laughs> another lawsuit that was <laughs> decided this week, uh, which is also super interesting in terms of uh, how it's going to affect the, the panorama of the music industry for the next two years in the United States, is the fact that uh, uh, Pandora has won uh, the uh, lawsuit uh, it filed uh, against uh, uh, ASCAP essentially or against uh, the right for publishers to withdraw their digital rights from ASCAP and therefore negotiating direct licenses with uh, uh, with Pandora. So we've seen like uh, we made headlines in the last 14-15 uh, months uh, uh, the fact that all these uh, sort of, uh, publishers like EMI publishing, Sony ATV, Universal Music Publishing withdrew the digital, the digital rights from ASCAP in order to go to Pandora and negotiate a direct deal with the service. Uh, and of course they could get better rates because if Pandora loses Universal Music Publishing then they, they lose a huge amount of their catalog and it becomes a mess essentially. Uh, but Pandora of course, because they had an agreement with ASCAP until 2015, they filed a lawsuit saying, look, we have an agreement with ASCAP, why is all the music that was supposed to be in the agreement dis disappearing? And, uh, and the ruling was that uh, they cannot do this. So essentially the direct licensing scheme that we've been talking about for the last eight, ten months is uh, crumbling, uh, at least as far as uh, ASCAP is concerned, uh, until 2015 when the deal between ASCAP and Pandora ends. So that's, that's really interesting, isn't it? Because we're all talking, I think uh, you were on the show as well a few months ago when we were talking about how significant this move to direct licensing was. And if we see that's not actually happening for another couple of years, that's, that's a significant move, isn't it? They need, they need Sasem in the US. Really? <laughs> 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 big time for lawyers, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but it was a big, a big theme in Washington as well. When I went to DC, uh, you know, everybody was talking about direct licensing, and uh, it just seems really interesting that now it's not happening. <laughs> but uh, then again, we just mentioned uh, it's different. But we just mentioned Clear Channel and Warner, yeah, uh, yeah. doing a, a, partner, yeah, partnership, a partnership, kind, but a, kind a of private partnership, deal. Yeah. So again, it's it's so hybrid. They, they, you know, they try everything. So just, just, you know, where is the money? For me, it's just, where is the money? It's a need money. So it, for me. Yeah. So it just, you know, the sentence, where is the money? It just, they need money. Yeah. Because the so, problem was as well that ASCAP, of course, if he was going to lose all those big publishers yeah. in the digital sense, yeah. it had much less leverage to negotiate rates for the smaller independents. Yeah. And so that, that was a whole different issue. Right. And also, Andrea, uh, another big theme, subject here is the uh, possible evolution of uh, collecting societies yeah. because uh, we have hybrids there too. So this is probably uh, touching that subject as well. Yeah, the, the collecting societies, it's, they, they are trying to adapt uh, to find, you know, new services, new new business models. Uh, so we just, yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's not new collecting societies, but they're just trying to find, you know, new way of moving. Yeah, maybe. Well, record companies will want to collect the rights and the royalties exactly. themselves and the, exactly and now you know you can find you, you don't have to to stop <laughs> stop but you don't you don't have to i don't know if it's subscribe if the right word for collecting societies but you don't have to work with with well you don't have to enroll well, yes but exactly now uh, especially in europe because yeah. uh, thanks to the european commission now you know you can just work with uh, Cobalt or you know or another company. So it just it's it's uh, for them. It's it's a pretty complicated market now. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, um, so we're going to finish uh, with a story that uh, is uh, less uh, up, upbeat than uh, Rario's story, which is a story of a company that is uh, hasn't quite hit the market, but is is poised to to grow quite a bit, uh, hopefully in the next few months. And that's the one of uh, a Rhapsody. So Rhapsody. Uh, is in trouble. Uh, of course, uh, the company has been fairly static in the last few months. Uh, I was, I was criticizing it last week because uh, we we're talking about how they implemented, for example, offline caching of tracks on the on the mobile application really late. Like they were like almost two years late on Spotify, on being able to cache tracks on mobile. And it's like for a company that's been around in streaming forever, that's not acceptable. You know, it's a company that should have moved faster with the times. Uh, and so, uh, what happened is that uh, the investors in Pandora. Uh, have uh, moved, uh, they've uh, ousted the CEO uh, John Irving, uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, uh, they are looking, they, they are uh, letting go of uh, about 15% of the staff of the company yes. in, the, in the United States only. CFO included. 
CFO included, oh, right? Okay. And and they are you know they're focusing on international expansion, which is going to be extremely hard because they don't have much of a brand name uh, outside uh, is, of the it's US. It's very expensive. Well, it's the same price as Spotify. It's at ten dollars a month, I think. Uh, yeah, they're but all the same international price. expansion is very, very expensive. Oh, international expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> you need and so, money. Yeah, and so that's really. that's. Uh, I wonder, like, is it ever possible for a service like that to come back after experiencing such a decline? It, it's a bit like you know MySpace. You know, they, they tried as hard as they could, but it's always difficult to recuperate. It's dead. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, in your experience, as uh, you know, as well, having a, a business that works in digital music, as well, how do you see a company like that being able to come back? And, and if they can, how much, how hard do they have to work? At no it? easy task for sure. You're right, and she's right. It's going to be very expensive. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking that that saving 15% of uh, wages might help in. Uh, uh, financing the international expansion, and it also depends on the market, I guess. I, it's probably instrumental to, uh, you know, something else. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's a single move there. I think it, it's not that they're hiding anything. It's only that they need to be international, and then they'll do something else. Yeah, yeah they need to. But I worked for MySpace, uh, and uh, for me. My space is is dead, and I'm really sad, <laughs> really. <laughs> but but the, my space was unable to understand international expansion. Really, uh, it cost a lot of money, and th th they just didn't understand um, international, the international, and Europe and Asia and Russia, for example. Um, it, it's very expensive and you have to understand the audience and you have the problem with rights. Yeah. And really in Europe, it's just a mess, uh, especially for Rhapsody. I don't know if they can, if they are able to understand Europe and to, 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 to if they have the money uh, to spend in Europe for the rights. Uh, just an idea, for example, for, for, for SASM, uh, you have to pay 600,000 euro uh, per year yeah. if you want, yeah, just just for SASM. And then you have to pay, you know, for, for uh, major company and hopefully everything. Hopefully they, they yeah. did their homework before, you know, <gasps> choosing the market. It's, it's just so, in France, it's just, uh, yeah. yeah, in terms of technology, it's crazy, yeah. But, I don't know because okay, Rhapsody, but there there are also Deezer and Spotify and and Radio and, and a lot of new services. So really, um, you have to find a new service and a new offer. And, and you have to be cool, like cool, you know, exactly. You're not cool, you're not gonna get and the kids. where is the added value? MySpace was right. cool. Yeah, yeah. Was Spotify cool. was cool. Spotify well, was, was cool. Yeah, off. exactly. But. Rhapsody is not very cool. Yeah, where where but, is the added value to uh, use Rhapsody? It's honestly, I agree, but yeah. honestly, Napster was super cool. Yeah. Was super yes, cool. But Napster is was now, parody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Napster it was. It yeah, reminds piracy. me of uh, Sony and Walkman. Yeah. But Napster was illegal, you know, in the beginning. So it was cool, maybe because it was illegal yeah. in the beginning. Might be, but it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But yeah, so, so uh, I think so we're gonna have to wrap it up. Rhapsody for because, me. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna have to wrap it up because I'm gonna start again with the panels very soon here. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is that, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, uh, I wanted to mention the new, sad news of the passing of uh, Ray Dolby, who was one of the great pioneers of the audio space, yeah. uh, creating Dolby technology uh, to reduce hums and hisses in audio recordings in 1966. But not only that, like he developed a whole company around that. He created 5.1, 7.1 surround sound uh, with his team, and so gave us a lot of quality. A lot like uh, high audio quality, especially for movies, and and so I, I, th I thought it was uh, fitting to to uh, talk about him for for a second. And th so much, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, it's uh, don't believe Thank the you. Uh, dbth.com, right? Uh, yeah, dot fr. Dot fr. Yeah, fr. Yeah, dbth. Sorry. Dot fr. Yeah, and it's uh, rockhall.it, and also check out rockhall.com, which is a new site where, uh, which is uh, essentially a music news, uh, both mainstream and industry in, in, in English. And uh, correct. Uh, I, I'm from uh, digitalmusictrends.com. If you follow the shows, uh, you'll know all about it. Otherwise, head to uh, digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com/digitalmusictrends. You can contact me on at digimusictrends on Twitter or email on contact at digitalmusictrends.com. Have a great week and until next time. And that's all for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter.